And before the election, we are sitting down with some of the candidates for you. Of course, right now, we're joined by Nathan Fletcher, County Supervisor, District 4, who is running for re-election. Nathan, good morning. Good to see good you Good morning. How are you? Uh, we'll start off with the UT has endorsed you already, saying yep. uh, in, in their words that you have earned a second term. What's your reaction to that, and how important a role does uh, an endorsement from a newspaper make for you? Well, look, I'm honored. We've got a, endorsements across the board, and I think it's a recognition, Raul, of, of the really difficult few years that we've navigated. Um, you know, no one ran for the Board of Supervisors expecting that we would have a global pandemic. But in San Diego County, look, it was difficult. It was incredibly hard. Uh, but our region did well. We stepped up. We've got one of the highest vaccination rates in the nation. We have one of the lowest death rates. Our unemployment rate is below the national average. And our kids are about to finish an entire year in the classroom. And I think we got through it um, by not being afraid to make the difficult decisions. And the actions we took saved lives. You know, our COVID death rate is one half that the state of Florida. And so we did good. Now we've got to continue tackling issues of housing and homelessness in these areas. The, the county's turned a corner and moving in the right direction and we see signs of progress. So I'm excited. I appreciate the endorsements and support and uh, look forward to facing the voters. I, I want to talk more about housing and homelessness, but before we leave the topic of COVID, because it, it has been a bumpy road for, for you guys right. uh, over the last couple of years and making difficult decisions and not everybody agreeing with you sure. to say the least. Uh, COVID rates tripled. Uh, in San Diego the last 30 days. Hospitalizations yeah. are, it's almost like you don't want to look at that because we, everybody got that text again yesterday saying, oh my goodness, what's going on? Right. Um, when you guys see that, yeah. do you start preparing to say, is there a possibility that we may have to now go back to where no. we were a year ago? Explain there, how you there, guys- there, There's not, and, and the reason is, is because we've got, 94% uh, of San Diegans have gotten a vaccine. And that makes the situation fundamentally different. The risk because of the success of the vaccine is fundamentally different. And that really is the stakes in this election. Yeah. You know, Raul, at a time where, where I was in the middle of administering one of the most effective vaccine programs in the nation, my opponent was out advocating people not get vaccinated, literally telling people don't get vaccinated, spewing misinformation and disinformation and perpetuating this anti-vax movement that's all rooted in a lie. But San Diegans rejected that. And because they rejected that, we are in such a stronger position now. And we're going to see increase in cases, but it's a fundamentally different situation because the vast majority of the public, hey, they trusted the doctor. They trusted the public health officers. They protected themselves and their families by getting vaccinated. And so it is a very different situation uh, than we faced over the last few years. If you are reelected, um, what will your priorities be yep. in terms of moving forward? Because going back to COVID, that has led to, it's almost like a, a just a snowball effect in sure. terms of the housing, the homelessness, everything's yep. gotten worse. Now we have inflation. It seems like one thing has led to another has led to yep. another. How do we fix it in your next term? Well, it's created a difficult situation yeah. and we're confronting that the same way we did COVID. We're doing it honestly, we're doing it openly, we're doing it very transparently. Uh, you know, highest priorities moving forward are homelessness. The, the main role the county plays in homelessness is providing mental health services, drug treatment services. In the last three years, where all, every budget I've been a part of the county has seen historic investments in bringing services online, mobile crisis response teams, helping people in crisis yeah. with clinicians, not cops, uh, crisis stabilization units, more housing than the county's ever built, both affordable and working class housing. Uh, and we're going to keep doing that. And we're not going to back down from the fights around common sense gun protection to protect people from gun violence. We're not going to back down from supporting what women's reproductive health. What can the county health. do? Obviously, with the shootings we've had the last week and a half and the president addressing the nation last night, what can the county specifically yeah. do um, with, with guns and, and gun violence? Yep. Well, I'll tell you what we already did. Uh, when I got elected, I convened all the gun safety experts, the folks who dedicate their lives to this, and I asked that same question, what can we do? And they gave us a series of things. We needed to fund our Office of Gun Violence Prevention. We needed to pass a safe storage ordinance, holding people accountable for being responsible gun owners. And we needed to be one of the first counties in California to ban the sale of ghost guns. We took those actions and we'll continue to do everything we can. Because we're all, you know, in, in San Diego and California, look, we have restrictions in place, but the Second Amendment is still alive. You can still buy and own a right. gun. You got to do it responsibly. And because of what we do, we have one of the lowest gun violence death rates in the country right here in California, which shows you can pass common sense things, still allow people to, to buy and own a gun, and we need a lead and we can't back down in this fight. More kids have died from gun violence in schools than all of the veterans and active duty military and cops combined in the last two decades. This has got to stop. That statistic is wild. Um, and obviously when I ask what can we do, I mean within, within the parameters of yep. the county, there are, there are rules for the county, what the county can do, what that's the right. city can do, what the state can do. So that's, that's what's meant by and what have, can you do. That's right. And we've leaned into this fight right. uh, and we've passed uh, ordinances, we've passed common sense gun, gun control measures. 
uh, that we think can make us safer, and we'll keep looking for every additional opportunity. The, the shooter in the hospital um, in Oklahoma had just purchased the, the AR-15 on the Sunday, and then he, or the day before, an Same hour day. before, a couple hour days before. earlier. So um, maybe, maybe is, is that part of the helps. plan? Well, maybe, well, we have that in California. You couldn't do that. In you couldn't do that in this state, but in the rest of the state. You know, the, the one in Uvalde, an 18-year-old. Should an 18-year-old be allowed to buy a weapon of war? I don't think so. I don't think so. And so I think we've got to continue. You're a Marine. You're a veteran. You had many years and the, of... And the military gave me one, and it was trained in how to use it. And it was a weapon of war designed for war and only issued in those circumstances. And this is, I think, an important debate. And again, on this issue, our all voters got a clear choice. You know, I'm willing to step into this fight to protect our children. You know, my opponent's a wholly owned subsidiary, subsidiary of the gun industry. And, and this is the choice that San Diego voters have, and who you elect in the county supervisor matters. Nathan Fletcher, uh, election day is uh, June 7th, of course. We appreciate the time as always. Thank you. Good, Good to talking see you. to you. All right.